Ladies and gentlemen, it is almost time for the Six Nations 2019 and I, Abyss Rugby, I'm so excited for this tournament. It's going to be one of the most competitive tournaments that we have ever seen. I'm going to give you a preview and predictions to each of the first three matches in round one of the tournament. So make sure to get involved in the comments below, like the video and subscribe as well for more over the Six Nations. Let's start first of all with the first game, which is Wales against France at the start of France on the Friday night. Under the floodlights, what a way to kick off the rugby weekend. Coming into this match, France have had a pretty tough time of 2018, winning only three of eight matches, which really concluded with their loss against Fiji, losing 14-21 in Paris, the first time Fiji had actually beaten France in Paris. They lost against South Africa, they struggled in the Six Nations, losing against Scotland and other sides. It hasn't been a great year for the French. Put on top that the likes of Teddy Thomas is injured for this tournament, France are going to have a tough time, I believe. But they have one star who is coming into the four now, and that is Romain Untmak. He is the son of Emile Untmak and will be playing at centre against the Welsh instead of Matteo Bastero, who had had 50 caps. Untmak has had zero caps. So it's a brave decision from the head coach. Will it pay off? Let me know in the comments down below. But for France, we know that they are unpredictable. You never really know what you're going to get with the French. You don't know how they're going to turn up. If they are going to turn up and the French crowd will turn on their own side, if within the first 20 minutes that they're down by a try or two tries against the Welsh, that the crowd will turn on them. And that is exactly what the Welsh want. From Wales' side of things, they have had a fantastic 2018, winning nine games on the bounce, only losing one in 2018 against Ireland, who did win the Grand Slam. Wales have made a very interesting choice at scrum half, playing Thomas Williams, a Cardiff Blue scrum half, over Gareth Davis. Gareth Davis a lot more experienced, but Thomas Williams, I feel, has a lot more attacking intent and has that extra punch to really get us some more points in a game. Anscom seems to have the number 10 jersey all for himself now, and it seems to work when Biggers come off the bench, it has worked for Wales. How do I see this game going? Well, I do think that Wales are going to win, but I think that Wales need to be careful. France, as I've said, are unpredictable. They could be brilliant, and then they could be awful. They had a tough 2018, but they might have a brilliant 2019, and in a World Cup year, they always seem to perform. But I am going to back the Welsh boys. I am going to back them to win by seven or more points on the night. I think it'll be a cagey 20, 25 minutes. But then I think in the second half, we will begin to see the cracks of the French defence open. But you can never discard the French. The likes of Medad and Tamak in the team and pick them all at eight. You've always got a chance. The next game for you, ladies and gentlemen, will be on the Saturday afternoon. That is Scotland against Italy. Last time these two teams met, it was a very close game in Rome. 27-29 in Scotland's favour. This time in Murrayfield, you feel like home advantage will have a big difference. Scotland in 2018 had a very mixed year, getting some great results in the Six Nations, such as beating France and beating England and Italy, but then losing against Wales and Ireland. In the summer they did okay and in the autumn they didn't do too bad, beating Argentina but narrowly losing to South Africa. Italy on the other hand had a very tough 2018. No wins in the Six Nations and a poor autumn as well. It's been a tough year for them. But uh, since Conor O'Shea has come in he has made a difference in my opinion. I feel like he's come in and he's tried to give them more of an attacking edge. But with players such as Sergio Parise, Giraldini, all hitting their mid-30s now, it looks like it's going to be a tough season for them. They first up play against the Scottish side at BT Murrayfield, and we know how good Scotland have been at home recently. I do think that the likes of Finn Russell, Stuart Hogg, Tommy Seymour will love this match, and I do see them winning pretty comfortably, maybe by 10 or plus more points. But guys, let me know in the comments down below who do you think is going to win this one as well as the France match. And the final game of the weekend is that huge clash between England and Ireland out in Dublin. Breaking news for you guys that Manu Tuolangi will be starting at centre for England. A very brave choice. He hasn't started a Six Nations match since 2013. So over six years now since he started a game for England in the Six Nations. England in 2018 had a really up and down year. 
poor Six Nations from their start, uh, point of view finishing fifth. In the summer they did okay and in the autumn they had a few decent games but also getting lucky in some games such as against South Africa. Ireland on the other hand had an incredible year. Grand Slam champions winning the test out in Australia and then beating New Zealand in Dublin with Stockdale's try. Who can forget that fantastic match? Ireland at home are a force to be reckoned with and in my opinion the favourites for this tournament and most people I think would say that. Ireland at home a strong side we know that and England away will struggle if it's at Twickenham I think it'd be much closer but I have to back the Irish and I think Ireland will win this one by about seven to ten points on the day It'll be a tense match very very tense a lot on the line but I do think that Ireland will have enough to get over the line let me know in the comments down below your predictions for this one as well and if you have enjoyed the video make sure to subscribe leave a like on the video the Six Nations is here Let's have it, boys. Let's have it.